this is the second classical problem from the second midterm of uh, 2024 of X106. Uh, in this problem, we have a wire that's twisted in a particular way. So there's a straight section, a semicircle, and then a straight section going this way. We have a current on this that's moving in this direction. The radius of this semicircle is capital R. We are given a coordinate system, so x, y, and z is pointing towards us. This is a right-handed coordinate system. So this whole thing, this whole wire, is actually in the x, y plane. And it's carrying some current i. Uh, part A says, using Biosauart law, calculate the magnitude of the magnetic field at point P due to horizontal straight section, this section. Okay? So up to here. Now, to solve this problem, uh, we are going to, of course, divide this section into little parts. And we are going to look at the contribution from each part using Biosauart law. So each part is going to contribute a small magnetic field given by mu zero over four pi i dl cross r hat by r square. You could also write this as cross r by r cube, but it doesn't matter. Okay? So each is going to contribute this much current, and then we are going to integrate this. Okay? So the total magnetic field is going to be given by the integral of these little magnetic fields. Now, in this case, all the little parts are going to contribute magnetic field in the same direction. By right-hand rule, they're all going to contribute a magnetic field out of the uh, plane of the board. So because they are all in the same direction, we can write actually B is dB, right? All in the same direction. Okay. If they were not all in the same direction, of course, we would have to honestly do a, a vector sum. But because they are all in the same direction, we can treat them as scalars, and uh, we are good to go. Now, how do we calculate this dB? Well, dB is the magnitude of this thing, so we have to write some expressions for this R and for the L and so on and so forth. Now, I think it's convenient to uh, actually put the origin of our coordinate system over here. So I'm going to do that. Right. I'm not going to change the orientation. But I'm going to put the origin here. So this is actually coming from minus infinity and going to uh, coming to zero. Okay. So let, let's look at a little part over here. So this is where I'm trying to calculate the point P. This is my vector R. Okay. And I need to calculate, and this is going to be my vector DL, some small vector over here. And I'm going to need to calculate this uh, cross product and so on and so forth. Now, uh, let's call this angle theta, okay. the angle between the R and the L is theta. So if I write this dB, just the magnitude, because that's what I need. I want to integrate that one. I'll have mu 0, 4 pi, i. This is fine. Now, for the DL, uh, I can actually write dx. Okay. It's going to go in this way. So first of all, for DL cross R, let's get this out of the way first, you got cross r hat, the magnitude. So this is going to be dl times the magnitude of r hat, which is one, times, this is a cross product. So a cross product is going to be uh, maximal when it is 90 degrees. So this is sine theta. That's the angle between them. This is sine theta. The magnitude of r hat is one. So this magnitude is dl sine theta. Okay. So mu zero i dl, but that dl, because I'm just uh, you know starting from minus infinity, adding these little dls and coming to x equals zero, that dl is simply dx. So this is dx sine theta divided by r square. Okay. And I need to integrate this to get b. Okay. E is equal to this. And I have to decide on the limits of the integral. This doesn't look like integral sine. Okay. And I have to make it compatible with uh, dx, the theta, r, these all, you know, both theta and r is going to depend on where I am on this straight uh, wire segment. So they both depend on x, so to say. And I have to express everything in terms of you know, one other. So there are two choices here. Either we can express everything in terms of theta, that certainly works. You start by you know, theta being zero, you come to theta being uh, pi over two. 
that I think would work. Uh, and actually, uh, in the book, when we were solving examples, this was always the way it is done, because then the integral is easier to take. The other way is, of course, uh, expressing everything in terms of dx. That's a bit conceptually simpler, but the integral you get is going to be more complicated. Then your x is going to come from minus infinity, a stop at zero, and you have to express sine theta and r uh, in terms of those things. Uh, I'm going to choose the uh, second way, but uh, it doesn't really matter. In fact, I think choosing uh, theta as your independent variable is going to be more practical, but uh, I'll just choose x because it's uh, conceptually simpler. Now, so sine theta, it's a sine theta. Let's start with r square. So r square is simply r square plus x square, capital R square plus x square. So this is capital R, this is x, okay? Capital R square plus x square is going to give r square. Okay, okay, it's minus capital R square, but because we are squaring, that doesn't really matter. Whereas sine theta, well, sine goes with uh, opposite over hypotenuse, so this is capital R over small r, so sine theta is going to be capital R over uh, r square plus x square to three halves. Now, if I make the substitution and take the constants out, what I'm going to end up with is mu zero over four pi i, I get one constant r out from here, from minus infinity to zero dx by uh, r square plus x square three halves. Okay. So I have to take this integral, and to take this integral, uh, I need to make some substitution, the so-called trigonometric substitution. Before that, though, I want to simplify this a little bit. I want to actually write everything in terms of x over r, so I'm going to have you know, one plus uh, x over r squared over here. So how do I do that? I divide this by r, and then I multiply this by r. I divide this by r square and r square, so I multiply this by r square uh, to three halves, which is r cube. Okay. And then uh, this is going to be r squared divided by r cube, this is one over r. So let's do that. Mu zero over four pi, i over r. The integration is still from minus infinity, minus infinity to zero because when x is at minus infinity, x over r is also at minus infinity. When it's at zero, when it's also at zero, it's minus infinity to zero. Du, I'm going to call this du, by one plus u squared three halves. Okay. Now I have to take that integral. That integral uh, is going to be some number. Okay, it's not going to depend on anything like r, i, or anything like that, but I have to calculate that number. And the way to calculate that, as I said, is using trigonometric substitution. Now, if this was a minus, I would actually try uh, sine or cosine there, because one minus sine squared is cosine squared, that's how I get the simplification. Because it's a plus, I'm going to try u equals tangent theta. Or let's call it alpha, because I already have a theta in the problem. So u equals tangent alpha. Uh, this will allow me, so tangent alpha is of course sine alpha by cosine alpha. This is sine square by cosine square. If I add one to it, in the numerator, I'm going to have sine square plus cosine square, which simplifies to one. So I get some, I get rid of this additional factor. I get something, uh, a nice uh, function of only uh, alpha. So if we do that, we also need to calculate this du. So let's do that. Du is, so this is sine over cosine. So this is cosine alpha, uh, cosine alpha, the second one is the same, so it's cosine squared alpha minus uh, the sine alpha, the derivative of cosine alpha is minus sine alpha, so this is plus sine squared alpha, square of cosine alpha, so this is one over cosine squared alpha, or second square alpha, okay, uh, times du, of course u, uh, sorry, the alpha, sorry, the alpha, and if we actually make a substitution over here, then one plus u square, I'll need to erase some things, uh, let's perhaps erase this, um, I think this much room is enough, there is ample room in the problem, and probably if you do it with theta, it actually takes a little less, uh, yeah. b is 
mu naught over 4 pi i over r uh, from minus infinity to zero. Uh, now, actually, minus infinity uh, for tangent alpha corresponds to minus pi over two. Uh, zero corresponds to zero, tangent zero is zero. Um, so du becomes uh, d alpha over cosine square alpha, one plus u square, if I substitute this, uh, it becomes one over cosine square, one over cosine square to three halves power is one over cosine cube square, this goes to numerator, so I get cosine alpha d alpha. Okay? I get cosine cube from here, one over cosine square from this, and they cancel and I get cosine alpha and I can integrate this. Uh, this is gonna be, you know, sine alpha minus pi over two to zero, this is just one. Okay, so this is actually one, this is going to be the answer. Okay. It's a little bit involved, but most of the difficulty is actually in the mathematics and the integration. And this is hopefully something that's covered in, uh, in calculus, the first semester calculus. Now for part B, using bio savart law, calculate the magnitude of magnetic field B at point P due to the semicircular section. So over this part, this is actually easier. Uh, this still applies, this still applies. So all the little parts on that semicircle is going to create a magnetic field pointing this way in the positive k direction, positive z direction. So I can just use that. So I can keep this. And in this case, the L cross R is between two vectors. So my dr is going to look like this. It's a vector at tangent. This is a radial vector. This is my r now. They're perpendicular to each other. So the cross product is simply the dl times r, or r dl. Okay. So let's look at part b. And I need to calculate, uh, I should have kept the VSR actually. So let's r again. Over r squared. Okay. So, so I need to calculate this db. DB is mu naught over four pi times I. The magnitude of this is RDL and by R square, okay? So I'm not keeping this R. Uh, so this, sorry, this is one. This has to go away. So, sorry, I made a mistake. Uh, there is no R there, so there is no R here. This is going to be DL over R square, and I'm integrating this over the semicircle. So over the semicircle, semicircle, this R is constant, it's capital R. These are all constants, and this integral is going to be half the circumference. So that's uh, half of two pi capital R, so pi times capital R. Let's write this down. Mu naught I over four pi R square. So mu naught I four pi, this becomes capital R square. This integral becomes pi times R, and we get mu naught I over four pi, oh sorry, pi is going away, over four R, okay? And uh, actually in both cases, for part A and for part B, we need to indicate the direction as well. Uh, so this is going to be the magnetic field, semicircle is going to be mu naught I over for our k hat. And the previous one was, you know, whatever we calculated uh, times k hat, because this is in the positive z direction. Uh, what about this part? Well, that part does not contribute. They are not actually asking for this. And this is useful for answering uh, part C, where they're asking, what's the total magnetic field, B total, at point P due to the entire wire? So the magnetic field at point P due to the entire wire is just the contributions from this uh, horizontal straight back section and the semicircle. That's it. So for part C, we can simply write those two. They are both in the same direction. This one contributes by right-hand rule something in the positive Z direction. This one by right-hand rule contributes something in the positive Z direction. So for part C, we'll simply write these up. Uh, B total is, you know, B horizontal plus B semicircle plus B 
vertical, this is zero, okay? And B horizontal we calculated, but I erased it, so I'll just cheat. And this is mu i four pi r. Uh, not i over four pi r k head. Uh, the semicircle is over here. Mu not i. Oh. Over four r uh, k head, and we need to add these up. Uh, I think the easiest way to do this is to multiply this by pi in numerator and denominator, then you get the same thing, but this one has plus pi, so this is mu naught i over four pi r, one plus pi times k hat. This will be the total magnetic field. It looks a little bit strange, so if you get this in an exam, uh, you might feel nervous that uh, this looks strange, but it is what it is. Right? And I think uh, this is correct. It's at least compatible with the, it's uh, in harmony with the answer given in the official answer sheet. 